Classic Rock Beagle. Welcome to the Annals of Classic Rock Beagle. I'm Dobbs here with Jarl Axel and Moser. We review... Well, yeah, of course I am. Moser, you son of a bitch. So anyway, Moser, I'm 52, not 142. Anyways, we review music and topics from the classic rock period, which we define as being from the release of Rubber Soul in 1965 to the release of Hybrid Theory in 2000. Because the next two episodes are unusually long ones, we're going to bypass the usual spiel of putting up our Best of the Decade episode immediately following the torture episode. To make sure we get a video in before I kick the bucket, apparently. Today we'll do another random review. Moser will pick a year from the classic rock era on random.org. Will I select, use this six-sided six die to select the category? So Moser selects 1994. And I roll it too, so classic rock songs from August 1994. Dateline, August 22nd, 1994, my 25th birthday. On August 21st, the last French troops left Rwanda following a vicious genocide against ethnic minorities that killed hundreds of thousands of mostly Tutsi. On August 22, 1994, DNA testing linked football star and Buffalo icon O.J. Simpson to the murder of his ex-wife Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. In sports, Australian swimmer Kieran Perkins broke world records in both the 800 and 1500 meter freestyle. Clear and Present Danger starring Harrison Ford broke Forrest Gump's hold as the number one movie in theaters. Lisa Loeb and Nine Stories topped the pop charts with their hit Stay. It was a pretty sweet song, but we'll focus today on 10 rock songs that were first released as singles in August 1994. This story is about a girl named Jane St. Clair, named after an intersection of Toronto, Ontario. Written by Stephen Page and his friend Stephen Duffy, no relation, it was the lead single from the Bare Naked Ladies 1994 album, Maybe You Should Drive. I wasn't able to locate the exact date of release, but have confirmed it was released in August 1994. Now, I like Bare Naked Ladies, and I also like the band. I've never heard this song on the BNL station on my Pandora. There's a reason for that. While it went to number three in the Great White North, it bombed everywhere else. That may be because uh, it is a frightfully boring song. It's not even witty. Sorry, eh? Corn meet the world. World meet corn. Blind is Corn's first single released on August 1st, 1994. With the benefit of hindsight, I can place Corn at the intersection of Nine Inch Nails and Lincoln Park. This makes them somewhat ahead of its time and therefore influential. I can't say I'm much of a corn guy, and I can only take so much of them. But for short bursts, I find them. Interesting. Most of the time. Yikes, this is just awful, guys. Anyways, Blind is indicative of the angry post-grunge vibe of the time. Corn would become one of the progenitors of angry white boy... <clears throat> Stop it, Moser. The movements of the song are interesting, but not the words. Oasis. Let's just get this out of the way first. 
yeah, that ain't happening. Anyways, they kind of eased into the public eye, releasing a demo called Live Demonstration, and then releasing singles Supersonic and Shake Maker. Roughly coinciding with the release of the first major label album, Definitely Maybe, was Live Forever, released on August 8th, 1994. It became the first top 10 hit in the UK going double platinum. Although it failed to chart in the US, it did go to number two in the alternative charts, giving them cred that they would cash in a year later with Wonderwall. It's a big, arrogant blast of Manchester dysfunction. If you like Oasis, this is your song. I like it. Not classic rock, you say? First, how does Elton John not qualify as classic rock? He was a friend and collaborator with T-Rex, John Lennon, and... Okay, that's a bad example. Second, there's a backbeat. That's the defining part of rock and roll. So... This was released, obviously, from the soundtrack to um, <clears throat> uh, Forrest Gump, I think. Stupid as stupid does, Mrs. Blue. I find this as Elton's last really good song. I haven't tallied the scores as I, yet as I type this, so I don't know if it'll hit the great category, but it'll, it'll be close either way. This has a really good build to the chorus. Although he generally don't like Elton's voice changes after his surgery. It's fine here. And there are fake meaningful words. The lead single from their album Handful of Rain, Sabotage was a veteran metal band by 1994. They released their first album in 1983. This was the same year as Rat, Dokken, and Metallica when they made their debut releases. Sabotage was above the fray in the 80s metal scene. They are in no way posers. While they didn't give me that much to grab onto for their material, they at least had the decency to rip off good bands. Sabotage comes from a Queensryche slash Dio corner of metal. As for a handful of rain itself, its opening riff was very interesting. To me, the song started out slowly, but I warmed up to it the more I listened to the song. Neil Young is a versatile artist. Over the years, he's done country, doo-wop, electric, acoustic, pop, heavy rock, folk, He's as liable to do a scat album as uh, uh, a scat album. His brand of heavy rock tends to be more hit than miss for me. In fact, Neil's career got a heavy uptick with the advent of grunge as Neil was regarded as the godfather of grunge while it was big. It's easy to see why. <clears throat> Neil released this tribute to Kurt Cobain on August 16, 1994. Actually, he released the album on this date. He didn't release a single, but Neil made a video for this song, so I'm counting it. This was ugly, which itself is a fitting tribute. It seems stateside that Blur were the little brothers of Oasis. Here there were the poster children of Britpop, with Oasis being the clearly dominant force. The thing is, Blur didn't come out with Oasis. Their debut single, She's So High, actually came out the same month as... Who would have guessed? In Britain, Blur was enormous, ruling alongside Oasis with a dozen songs, making the top 20 from 1994 to 1997, and another four around the turn of the century. Park Life was the third single from their album, Park Life, released on my 25th birthday. 
Now, I know Blur isn't Pink Floyd or anything, but they're better than this, aren't they? This is awful. And I thought the Bare Naked Lady song was disappointing. Jeff Buckley, son of avant-garde folk singer Tim Buckley, graduated from music school at age 19 and found himself in demand as a backing singer for other people's records. Jeff struck out on his own music career in 1990. After beating the coffee house circuit hard in Los Angeles and New York, he was signed by Columbia Records in the summer of 1992. He released a live EP in 1993 and then released his debut album, Grace, on August 23, 1994, and his debut single, Grace, on August 23, 1994, just to confuse future reviewers. Anyways, Buckley would become best known for the sixth single on the album, a cover of Leonard Cohen's Alleluia. But Grace was his best song. Morrissey? Oh! Let's micromachine this. Although the Smiths had minimal success in the U.S., they were a legendary band in the U.K. across between Squeeze and The Cure. Because Morrissey and guitarist Johnny Mark wouldn't stand to be in the same town with each other, good call Johnny, the Smiths broke up in 1987 never to join again. With this, Morrissey became a solo singer and punchline. He released his fourth album, Box Hall and I, in 1994. The third single, Now My Heart Is Full, was released on August 23rd. The nightmare version of Brian Ferry is always simultaneously feeble, whiny, and douchey, just off pitch. Morrissey is incapable of not sucking, though the backing tracks weren't too bad here. Dime. We let Billy Joe set the record straight. I've been around since fucking 1980-fucking-8. Well, not quite 1980-fucking-8, but Green Day actually came out in 1989 with their debut EP, 41 Days, 16 Hours. They were pretty much invisible in the public eye for the first three EPs and two albums. That changed when their first single from Dookie, Longview, was released. It caught lots of cred going to number one on Billboard's alternative charts. Their third release from Dookie, Basket Case, was released on August 29th, 1994. On the pop charts, it went nowhere. People don't realize no Green Day single entered the Billboard's Hot 100 until American Idiot in 2004. But they were already legends for their work in the 90s, rightfully so. So that was 10 classic rock songs from August 1994. So what do you think, Moser? Okay. Very funny. So I have something else going on in my life right now. So it. So the best of the 60s and the next album rank will take some time before they come up. So if you like the content, be sure to slap on the thumbs up below. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment below, and as always, rock on. Oh, the crucified It holds